The Where's My 40 Acres podcast is recorded in front of a ratchet studio audience. Wow. Who is he seeing? I think her name is Tasha. Tasha. I don't, I don't want to know anything else. You know what? Nowadays, all you need is a name, and then you're like, bye bye. Founder. Mm. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay, that lace friend is doing the most. And why does she only speak in emojis? She looks like she's working at the pyramid tonight. Yo, what's good, clean folk listening to this clean podcast? We are the PG version of Where's My... Motherfucker, you were listening to the Where's My 40 Acres recap show, and we are here, fuck that fuck shit, to talk about one of the blackest shows on television and do a quick review of this week's episode, and that is Insecure, created, written, directed, produced by Issa Rae. One of the most amazing, hardest working black women in Hollywood. And shout out to HBO because they're giving opportunities and chances. They got another black show coming soon from a couple women, a women writer, women creator and writer. So they're doing big things over there. Doing big things over there, HBO. They care about color and progress. I appreciate them. I appreciate that too. Thank you. Yep. So we're on episode two. And what is the name of episode? Have a two? question. Hella, hella what? Hella question. Hella, yeah, that is all right. So, um, <laughs> this episode opens up with Issa talking to the fucking Molly or whatever and thinking that her and acting like her and Lawrence are back together or at least working through it. Yes, denial. But they ain't, <laughs> they ain't spoke, denial. they ain't spoke since the great Dickens. So I don't know what she's talking about. I don't even think she, I don't even think she knows what she's talking about cuz just the grand delusion of things, you know, it's just I don't know. She's very confused. She's been in her own world so long that she actually has not been paying attention to any of the other social media going on around her. And this is where she finds out that fucking Lawrence has actually been talking to another girl named Tasha that all her friends were aware of and had even been discussing and had heard through on the grapevine. She was the only one not sent the chain mail on this. Well, if Molly didn't know, the other two knew. Okay, true. Yeah, Molly Molly don't care, though. You know Molly don't give a fuck. (laughs) But yeah, Kelly and uh, Tiffany definitely knew. Right. And they also but knew because just of just as confused too about what happened because you know he was kind of I think where was at the gym and he was thinking about her as well. Mm-hmm. But he he always confused though. Yeah, the like, episode did his... open up with him <laughs> work. Did cut over that's, to him that's working his, out. That's his state of being <laughs> since he came on. Like just hey, being confused. Uh, Chad got a nice little spot though, right? Like chad got a big ass white house with a nice size garage and everything set of steps running up to the crib nigga drinking on good juice got some land my nigga like that, <laughs> that was some organic that was the bottle juice right there yeah that was that was pressed early today juice. <laughs> mm-hmm. like yeah that's that 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 right not have a shelf life of a couple of months that so, needed to be consumed within a I week need, i need somebody to find that juice <laughs> Yeah, the, the bread he was that probably was like the best of the grapes. So, um, as Issa is finding out that there's a whole nother side to the new Lawrence, and that she's sharing her man, girl, you share him with the weekend chick. Is it even her man though? He's not. He's not anybody. He he's not his own man right now. Mm-hmm. Um, they they find out they look the girl up. I love this scene because Kelly is like. You know, with just the first name, you can find anybody in like 20. And then Molly's like founder. <laughs> and, and they looking her up and they're going through her fucking, I guess, Facebook and internet and Instagram right. and all the deets. And Issa's like, man, I don't want that information. I ain't about that life. You know, I ain't about that, I ain't about that drama shit. Then she goes in the bathroom and starts rapping a diss to Tasha. Which was, did she call herself a snack? Yeah. Okay. That was, it was a very angry rap, and Molly heard it, and she heard it very casually, which means Issa does this rap shit all the time around her. Clearly, I didn't think, I didn't think Molly heard it. I thought like her 
Issa rapping was always like an internal thing. No, and then, I've and always then thought it's been external, like outward. No, I always thought it'd been an internal thing. Like there's something she, like she does. Like even in the um in the in the um Arca Blacker says she would do that. She would go to the bathroom and they'd be talking. Like that's how she, that I, was her talking to herself. See, I and then never... when Molly Molly came in, Molly just thought she was just staring at the at the mirror. Uh, and you could be right. I just kind of always thought she did that. And one, I met Molly's facial expression was kind of like, "Girl, you're all right." And the other one, which Molly always kind of looks like, girl, you're all right anyway. That's just kind of her look. But the other thing is that we've seen scenes where Issa does that in her bathroom at home, and she actually writes lyrics down. Yeah. I mean, no, she has times when she does it where she's actually doing it. But that time, that was her mind. When she goes, like, she was just uh, reacting off of that. Okay. Like, her 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 immediate feelings about that. That's why I, I took it. That was her immediate feelings, and it came out like that. And you're then, probably right. You know, a girl came back was like, hey, girl. Because she was just staring. Like, she went in there and just staring in the mirror. Yeah, you're probably right. So they cut to, and, and at that point, Issa flips the script and is like, did she say look, she, did she say look that bitch up or run that bitch or something? What did she say to Molly when she said run that bitch? She said, run that bitch? Mm-hmm. Okay, Um, can we talk about Kelly using Frank Ocean? To slander. She said, girl, she looked like she working at the pyramid tonight. I missed that. I was, no, I that. that. Oh my God. I was like, oh, oh, I'm kind of mad. I missed that. No, she did not just say that. Mm. But she did. Kelly, Kelly and her little dig be hilarious. Because she's the same one, you know, when they were talking about, um, you know, Lauren and, you know, um, Issa was saying, like, you know, we've been together for five years. That just doesn't go away. And then here comes, she said, don't forget he was on your couch for, like, two of those years. He just got <laughs> this business plan. Yo. Fuck him. <laughs> I know what I forgot to say last episode that I get to say at the beginning of this episode. When Molly confronts Issa and says, I thought you said you didn't want your man back. Issa said, bitch, I was lying. <laughs> that yeah. shit made yeah. me scream. When she said, bitch, I was lying. <laughs> it's like, yo, of course I want my man back. <laughs> so that goes into this episode, and they look up all her information, and they're going through fucking Tasha's Instagram and shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord. This girl said these poppers are popping. Was she? Was she? Was she? Uh, thought about hitting her? No, Tosh. No, no, Tasha's Instagram oh, no, picture. No, the, the, the Instagram, yeah. Was her yeah, eating the jalapeno poppers? And it said these Which poppers honestly, are look, poppers. We, if you if you follow the actress Instagram, it ain't that much. Different. Nigga, that was the beauty of it. I was like, they could have yeah, used I was her like, real Instagram. I, I, told, I was like, I think that might be some of her actual Instagram pictures. And I was like, oh lord, do poppers is popping? They be popping. <laughs> and like it's it's cool because Kasha, Tasha's character is she just hood. She ain't bad about it. Like she's just that's just her. Like that's where she was. That's where she grew up. She, that's she, she from the streets, off. which it's is not, fine. There's not, there's, yeah, there's not there's nothing bad about it, nothing good night highlight. Just like that's how you are. My ass country, her ass hood, and it's great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's true. So um, Molly has another meeting with her therapist. Also, um, in this episode, shout out to Issa Rae's Harriet Tubman hoodie. That shit was dope. She had a lot of dope shirts this episode. She had a Biggie and Tupac shirt poet, on at the end. I did like that shirt. She had. Mm-hmm. She had, yeah, the last poet joint with them pants. She was rocking at the gallery. She was wearing. Yeah, she looked too. cute. Those mm-hmm. those um aren't yellow pants like that mustard. Yep. It and the Harriet Tubman hoodie was dope. Like, it's like the way it was done, period. It was dope. We get another uh, stab at Molly's therapist. And even in this conversation, even went weirder with the therapist trying to explain to her that maybe you need to change your expectations and aspirations was, for what you think you should, should deserve. It, yeah. was, it was so great. I'm sitting there watching, like, you go, girl. You better, you better, you better analyze her because all she did was bring out a trend 
She's like, you know you do this a lot, right? Yeah, what you, you mean? Should. Everything was should. Yeah, everything is should how it should be. Yeah. But then um need- Molly ain't going back to her, you know that, right? Because Molly when she said, So I'll see you next time, and Molly was like, I'll give you a call. Molly not going back. She'll go back because she left her head. When she said that magical thinking part, mm-hmm. like she I feel like she was like, uh-huh. Like, well, she it, it hit too close to home, but it's gonna leave questions. Now here's my question. And knowing, this... and knowing Molly, she's gonna want those questions answered. Here's my question. Did she go to the therapist after she tried to kick it with the boys at the hockey game and that like actually had no payback? Like the results for it were not what she expected. She expected to be in and cool with one of the hit the H and I C of the company, it, and it didn't turn it, out that way. She expected to be in and cool immediately. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. And I, I think I was sitting here. I was talking to my girl. I was like, "Hey, you know, she needs, you know, like, cause even the dude, the white dude in the last episode, remember he said you gotta, you know, the girl was talking about." Well, maybe she didn't get her stuff. It's like, well, you got to ask for it. We and missed, like and that. we didn't discuss that either. So let's discuss that yeah. now. Let's just bring she, that up to speed. And, she and my girl to, was, sitting there, was sitting there like, yeah, you know, but you got to understand, like, women aren't socialized to mm-hmm. do that, when, especially when it comes to work. She said, we're, we're socialized to, we'll make apologies about things that we're not, that we, like, you know, if we have experience that we need, we'll make apologies if we don't have that certain experience. While a man will go in there and and be like, "Hey, this is, I ain't got that experience, but I got these three things that are great." We yeah. will take we will take on more work, and hoping that you will see you that us doing more work leads to more stuff. When then somebody else would just go in there like, "I want more money." Right, and that's kind of what happened. How- that's that's kind of what went down in the first episode when she talked to Travis. They were at the. Basically, like, it's not a going away party, but they were throwing a party for one of the um, workers there, the female, the woman lawyers. And she was moving the to the she Chicago was to office. The second episode. Yeah, she was yeah. moving to the Chicago office in the first episode. And that's when Travis was like, nobody wants to go to Chicago office. Like, she just couldn't handle it here. She couldn't cut it. That's why they're sending her to Chicago. And Molly was like, I don't think that's it at all, because I saw her here handling heavy caseloads and working late nights all the time. And that's when Travis was like, Maybe she maybe she's going to Chicago because she doesn't feel compensated here. And Travis, that's where Travis did exactly what you just explained. He's like, well, maybe she should have just stepped up and asked for more pay. And Molly was like, yeah, because it's just so easy for women mm-hmm. to be heard when they speak or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And, and, and some of the stuff with the boys club, like. Because like the cool thing about when they show her her agency, you're not seeing a bunch of guys just be dickish. Like all the guys have been pretty nice, you know what I mean? They've been pretty cool. Her boss, even her boss at the high game, was fine. You know, when she was talking to people; they were all fine. So you don't have that big thing of just being like, you know, we just outright, you know, just chauvinistic. But the boys' club kind of comes in, and sometimes it can be just unintentional because if all of us like a certain thing, then we can go do something. Like all of them liked hockey. So they all connected on that. So then somebody that's an outsider like that is always going to feel like I can never be that close because I don't have that sameness. So I feel like I have to put on, I have to try to like these things or try to be this thing that, that you are because just by y'all being men and being similar things, y'all have similar interests that are already aligned. So if you're like, oh, yeah, man, oh, oh, I love football. Yeah, I love football too. Oh, maybe we should go watch the game and everything. All right, cool, man. You know, and it'd be it'd be something just nonchalant. Y'all just gonna go watch football together, and then y'all build these relationships that you don't have with other people, mm-hmm. or you don't have with other person who doesn't like that same exact thing. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> she tried to go to the game and connect over stealing shrimp and putting them in your purse, and then tried to connect at work the next day over the same thing at the water cooler, which it was awkward the way she did it. And two, she wasn't just in with him like that. Like, you talked to him a little bit last night. He's still going to look at you in the workplace as the black woman in the workplace in the lawyer's office. Yada, 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 yada. That, that kind of didn't get the result that she was looking for. And I think that sharing with the going and talking to the therapist, like trying to get her eyes open, wasn't wasn't really helping a whole lot either for her. Hopefully it will. Uh 
I don't know, pay off later. But what we do get after the so unnecessary Tasha slander from the girls group is Tasha and Lawrence kind of kicking it. Tasha's talking about this cookout that her family's going to have and how she got to keep her mama from doing too much work because her mama be worrying about uh, baking all the pie crust when she can just buy that pie crust from the store. Nobody care if she bake it or not. And as she's talking, fucking Lawrence confesses that he had sex mm-hmm. with Issa. And it was funny in the last episode when Lawrence was trying to tell Tasha that he was still trying to get over, you know, like closing up, tying up loose ends with Issa. Tasha hit him with the, uh, like, what do you mean? Like, what type of things do you need to tie up loose ends on? And he was like, oh, you know, just stuff like going to get my mail and stuff like that. But really, you know, her, she was being like subtly inquisitive about, you know, are you still into her? Yada, 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 yada. So for then this to happen in this episode, for her to find out that he actually did go and fuck her Mm -hmm. the other night, she handled it way better. I like the way they wrote her character to handle it. Like she could have spazzed out and acted all loud. Yeah, she didn't do that. How how do you, I guess you, one would expect somebody to act, you know, I mean, and she did the right thing. Mm-hmm. Like I love how Issa always says, you know, I don't want it to be a thing where we're putting the two women against each other. You know, I wanted to just show a real thing and then show like that. You know, Tasha wasn't somebody who was out to get Issa. Tasha was just somebody who was there. She's not you know what I mean? Why, why, while this relationship had their own problems. You know, because she said, like, you know, TV will put any other show would have put them two against each other. Would have had her Tasha walking by, giving East like this hard side eye, like I got your man now and all that stuff. They even did and, a fake with that this episode though, when they had Issa look her up, find out where she worked at, go to the bank, act like she needed to make a deposit, and then you know, I need saying I need to make a deposit, and then punching her in the face, and the white woman <laughs> tripping in the corner screaming, pop, "You got jalapeno <laughs> pop." And then she looked at the white woman, shut up, bitch. And of course, that's a fantasy. And Issa's still outside her car. Like, I like that they had her imagine what type of thing she might want to do, but not actually going through and doing that. Instead, she ends up asking Molly to go talk to Lawrence for her to find out, you know, if he's even still into her anymore, if he would be willing to get back with her or take her back. Mm-hmm. And Lawrence knows why Molly is there at the fucking cart when he sees her. Molly still though. <laughs> oh Lord, it was very obvious. Yeah, when she was there too. But um, she she asked him, and I like the way she handled giving the information to Issa. Just straight up, no slander of Lawrence or anything. He but he said, done. yeah, he he said he's trying, he's moving on. Finally, he got a new apartment. Mm-hmm. That he was done. Yeah. Someone I was gonna say someone said on Twitter about that whole when um you know Lawrence told Tasha that you know she he slept with his ex. Um he said Lawrence is using honesty to keep distance with Tasha while keeping the other door open, you know, for her to still be around. So and I was like mm. I could I could understand that if he hadn't yeah. went back to apologize genuinely is seen apologize because he didn't even put up a fight when he went back to her house to talk to her and she came outside in them slippers and and he You're said what he, i know he said he said what he said and she was like i need to go back in the house he didn't put up a fight he dirt dog sad face was gonna leave and yeah. she does and like we, him if we see like the next episode, him in the house, like him in a new place, that would be really significant in him moving on. You know, because at this point, you know, with him just living at his crash at his friend's place, he always has the op that leaving the option, like I can always go back. Like it it never became not his home. And then when he started looking for stuff, you saw you you saw that part where he paused, but then it became real. Like if I move out, I moved out. Right, we we not together no more. So, and I like that they did it for both of them, because while they were doing the scene of him looking at this apartment where the woman was telling him that it wasn't gonna be on 
it wasn't going to be available long because people like that area, they were looking at that spot and his boy Chad is being really fucking chatty. And I feel like he's fucking this girl too. This real to chick. Oh yeah. You um, know that. Yeah. He was giving them googly eyes and everything. He was like, um, whenever they ask you to do the tour, you do the tour. And I feel like he said that because you can follow behind the woman and look at her ass the whole time you're doing the tour. Like, I feel like that's what he was inferring. <laughs> but, or maybe, I don't know. I don't know. But, and I like what he, and I liked what he said to Lawrence. He said, you got two bedrooms, one for you and one for your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> that man's level petty and just, just brute honesty. It's just, it's well needed. <laughs> oh yeah. But as you have that scene, in conjunction, you have the scene where Issa is looking at Lawrence's side of the closet like, why the fuck am I leaving his side of the closet open? It's over. I can use my whole closet now. We not together no more. He don't live here no more. He don't have no space here. And she and moves her clothes where the, over. Uh, where she goes into acceptance. Right. <laughs> Right. Of her, of her uh, breakup, you know. But we skipped the whole middle part that we got to get to, and I want to make sure we do not miss any of this because we've been talking mostly about their relationships. And by the way, when Issa tried to hide while in her car and dropped that seat back fast, that seat is broken now. I just want everybody to know that. Yeah, I can't. She cannot fall back that fast. I thought the same thing, nigga. <laughs> that seat is broken. And the fact that every fucking, uh, patrol person in that area thinks if you sitting in your car with the seat all the way back you sleeping and homeless is also hilarious her interaction with chad when she went looking for lawrence oh was also God. creepy chad because i couldn't tell if he was joking on her for going natural or if he wanted to smash i think it was both i think it was with him i think it was both yeah but i think he you know he was sitting there like he was being petty, but he was throwing yeah. it. He, he was, was being petty. little hooks to see if she was gonna, you know. Bye. But I like the whole part was him like, I know, I know why you're here, and I'm gonna make you say why you're here. I'm not gonna open up like, oh, you looking for Lawrence? I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna open the door. Have we gonna have a oh, oh, how, how's your day? I, I like your hair, girl. What's going on with it? Hey, like, I'm gonna make you ask. <laughs> Why are you here? Why I sip this good juice? It was funny. He actually asked her, did she change her hair? And she was like, well, actually I did. <laughs> you know, like he, he was picking up on stuff. And then uh, the other thing that I also thought he was doing in that scene was he had made the comment last episode, you know, I see you avoiding pressure, you know, pressure bust pipes. Well, he don't want nothing to do with Lawrence and Issa's drama. So he wasn't about to let her up in his house. Because then you got to get her out if you don't want her to be in there. And if her and Lawrence are going through some shit, you don't want to be involved in that shit. So he just kept her at the door because even at one point she kind of looked in like, you going to invite me in? And he made not near a move to invite her into that damn house. He treated, he treated her like a fucking vampire. She kept looking and peeking through the door and he stood right there. Mm-hmm. This organic grape juice. So that was kind of like he ain't here. Nice talking to you. You going about your way now. Don't bring that drama over here. Are you using mane and tail? <laughs> Y'all can keep that shit to yourself. Oh my God. So um I see them edges, girl. <laughs> you just yelling at her as she walking away, keeping the conversation going. Yeah, asshole, bruh. Um, so they they get into it where I think, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get to the school East of school stuff part in a little bit. They get to back to Molly and Molly I think has made a decision that instead of maybe the boys club isn't the right way to handle getting what she wants the recognition right. that she wants maybe she can get it from another person woman who has had to experience the same things she has had to experience and that's when she reaches out to the woman that moves to Chicago and she asked her, you know, if you ever need any help, mm-hmm. let me know. I'm willing to help you. And the woman actually takes her up on her offer. Now, I'm curious to see how this goes, because I like the dynamic of a black woman kind of like putting her faith and trust in trying a new direction, but with a white woman instead of dealing with white men. 
And I'm wondering how that's going to, how they're going to write that out. Because, you know, with the whole, um, like the, and I want to, I'm not saying it has anything to do with white feminism, but I kind of feel like it's, it's within the same vein. Like black women aren't going to go to white men to achieve any type of feminist support. But then you kind of find that you should be able to relate better to white women and you don't actually like that can be just as bad of an experience. So I wonder how that plays out in the workplace. I feel like she going to go there, do a bunch of extra work thinking that's going to get her recognized. And that woman going to take the credit for it. I don't think the woman. Gonna, I don't think. I don't think she's gonna take the credit for it. It's just gonna be like she's gonna do the work, and then it's gonna be like, okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. And she's gonna be like, well, I was supposed to get this, because the whole point that I feel like she need to get to is you need to just go ask. At no point have you gone to your you, with this with the same credibility you have. Like I, I'm doing all this work. I'm doing all this stuff. I'm doing all this stuff. But no point have you gone to your bosses and said, I've been doing all this stuff. Well, I think that was her about way. about a raise. I feel like that might have been her way of asking. She just asked a different person. She like Did she guys, ask her for more work? She asked her Let if she needed clear, any like, help. help you need. Yeah, it, it wasn't necessarily asking for more work. It was more like, I'm here to support if you need and the learn. help. Right, the, not, even to, not even to learn. It was like, if you need the support, like women in the workplace, we should support each other. If you need the support, I'm here to help you because you know that none of the men in their law firm have ever offered to help that white lawyer, that white woman lawyer with any of her caseloads at work. You know they have it just by listening to how Travis talks. So then it goes back to her whole her whole art since she got in this show is stuff is supposed to happen to me. And not her going out and make the change. That's even what the therapist was telling her about. Right. Good things are just supposed to happen to you. That's how you feel. Mm-hmm. I got this. I got this. I should have this. All this stuff should come to me. And instead of, and I, I'm, I'm hoping that it may go to the point where she gets to the end, where she'll be like, I just going to ask or demand for what I want. You know, and like, that, and that's what that's of, what I mean. I think this, this is her. Instead of going this alternate route of being like oh i'm a let me i'm gonna split my time between two different offices work here instead of just going to my bosses and being like hey i expect no 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 know. she see in the, in that vein she's asking for the record like a dude would do that like a dude would ask i can handle the work give me the work and instead of that she's been meticulously just working on a bunch of stuff and not being very vocal about it so the way I see it is she's being vocal with this woman, like, okay, I need to reach out and let her know that I can help. Like, this isn't her just doing, working harder than the other men. This is her building an alliance by at reaching out and asking for the work, like asking for, asking to help her, which is what go, I would do with my boss. Ask, she needs to go ask you for just, money. You you can you can do that, but you also can't always do that. Like especially as a black woman in that workplace, even when she talked to Travis about, did you have you asked for money and stuff? He was like, "The fuck for that requires me to do more work. I ain't asking for that." Like that's going to be the assumption if she goes and asks her employers for a raise, they might make her do more work. So, so she's going to take on the more work for free. You t- typically when you ask for a raise in these in these type of environments, Twan, there is no more work. There is no extra say, work. I've, I've, I've never been afraid to be like, hey, what is money like? <laughs> so, uh, well, first of all, everybody is afraid to ask what like, that what's money this like. Thing? like. Like, I'm already on, I'm already planning for when I get my license. Like, all right, so what? I bet. But I look what you what did you to get the license. What you about to make? Look what you look what you did to get the light. You look what you did like, to ask. You had to get the license to ask. Molly's not doing any extra work. Oh, if she's right, going I mean, to ask. I, yeah, I ain't gonna be doing extra work then. And and the only basis that she has right now for asking for more pay is the fact that she saw another employee's check that she wasn't even supposed to see. Yeah. So she can go yeah. ask, but they go more than likely she knows they're gonna say no. But at least then you done did it. You can cross that part off. I don't like to have I the, guess, the, but to the me openness just, of being like maybe. 
I don't know. I feel like there's a better way to plan that out, especially. And I think I feel like as a woman in that industry, you have to plan it out a better way because dudes are dickholes. They it just mm-hmm. it just ain't that simple. Like even me, I'm doing more work now and was asking for a raise and still was getting to run around. Like it's just that's just how it is. It, it like, again, I got no problem with you doing that. Come up creative ways, but like, let's do the obvious one first. Let me ask. Okay, they said no. Cool. All right, now I can go on to plans B and C. I'm not plan gonna, and I'm not gonna start plan D when I ain't done plan A yet. I don't know if that's plan D, but typically, Twan, once you ask, that's and they say no. That's it. Now you got to think about leaving and going somewhere else. That's a whole different plan at that point. That's not. That's uprooting yourself from your from I, your I comfort mean, for your from your comfortability and your good job. I mean, like I said, my my situation might be different because I was working too, and I was like making some choices, and they were like, one's gonna start a program here, other one start a program here. How much y'all paying me? Oh, that's cool. I'm great. That's appreciated. I ain't like that. How so, how about this? Have you which y'all, which, which y'all go pay me? And then what is the plan? Because I'm working on something, I'm gonna have a license. So what is the plan for that? How how about this? I have you to, ever? I, I needed to be an upgrade and pay once that happens. I I, I, like, I, I feel happen. you, but have you ever asked for money when you didn't need it? It was just out of straight. Yo, I should be making the same money as this person. Not, yeah. not that you, not that you, I'm not talking about like you get a check that helps you support yourself. I'm talking about that you get paid well and you're going to ask for more money. I mean, I'm always looking at what the new people are making. But you don't, but you don't know what new people are making. New pe- employees well, don't tell them. you that. We, I be friends and I ask. And, 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 and a cer- at a certain level, Twan, you, people don't ask those questions. And see, and that's the thing. Like, I'm just saying, like, not just saying that that doesn't happen. I totally believe you, but that's a great way for businesses <laughs> to keep everything people from getting it because nobody wants to. Oh talk yeah, about, but that's a HR you know, problem. That's an HR issue like, too. You can't. That's a, this. Like, you can get reprimanded for asking people personal information like that in the workplace. That like, see, and think about it. So you got you have a you have a rule. You can't do that. Like, but you have that. But think about this: you have a rule that if y'all two, as coworkers or whatever, talk about y'all salary, it ain't gonna do nothing but like, oh, you making this? No, oh, that's shoot. not that's I'm not what I said. Put, that's not I'm what I said. I'm gonna go ask. I'm gonna go ask the bosses for that because I would like to make that. And then now, H, now they make a rule where no, y'all can't that's, talk about that. Twan, that's not what I said. I said if you, I said you could be reprimanded. For asking somebody person, because that is personal information. That is private personal information. And if you ask a person and they're uncomfortable with that, yes, then uh-huh. you could be reported. But it ain't if if yeah. me and a coworker are talking, and I've had I've had conversations with dudes I'm cool with at work, and we talk about we never give an exact number. We talk in a ballpark range of what we make, but we never say exactly what it is. And we also talk about what you should be getting paid given your grade and whatnot. That those conversations happen, but there is a possibility that you could you either either people will think you being nosy and they don't want to talk to you, and there are people who legit know that they're making more money than you and doing less fucking work than you, and they're not gonna tell you the truth about nothing you ask them about their fucking money. That definitely happens in corporate America where you got people that's got years on you that come in and they come in asking for a certain pay, knowing they're gonna get it. Knowing they gonna get, you go, they gonna get there and you gonna do all the fucking work and they just gonna make more money than you. I know it's dudes in my job that make more money than me that yeah, don't do I, shit. It, I just think that's a so. it's like it's a, it's a weird false fear that the notion that asking another person about their money is going to breed jealousy between coworkers. Well, more likely it's going to be like, oh shoot, you get more money. I'm not mad at you. I'm gonna go talk to the people who run this. The obviously they got more money to give. Yeah, and then and then companies play on that because they don't want to give more money. Yeah, it's a game. It's every, <laughs> so every, every job. So everybody be saying. So that's why, like, that's why me game. personally, I go talk to everybody. Like, hey man, what you make? So let's let's all come up. Yeah, like I said, why, you why, ain't you just ain't you been making, in the environment. Why you making? But, why you making six dollars a year? You've been you've been in a very thing. comfortable fucking environment. You have not been in a oh that dude just brought a hundred and twenty some thousand dollar car with his bonus check this year environment. What the fuck is he making? And we do the same thing. 
yeah, environment. What is he making? Sir, what you making? Yeah, <laughs> like, you you do that. They're not gonna tell you. They're gonna laugh at I you. Would, <laughs> dude, that I, mean, I, ain't gonna lie. I went I went straight to my director who owns my cup and it was like, How much you make? I saw that being done. Uh, yeah. That, like I, I said, I don't have a, that, you are I in a comfortable a environment, sir, because that is not typically how the world works out here in corporate. I don't, because this is like, I'm like this, so bad, why you shouldn't do that? Like, why shouldn't I? Like, what is it hurting? Like, it ain't going uh, to rob It can hurt your relationships with your employer. It ain't going to change his paycheck. Yeah, but it can change upset. yours. I don't understand. Like, I, like, I, like I, it's the thing, like, when you think about it, like, why we get mad is like this this notion that's been taught to us from the corporations. Don't ask that. Don't ask a, that. That ain't that's a private thing to people. The, that only, person is gonna hurt, the only person the only per, but it's made a private thing because the only person is gonna hurt the corporation. The corporation is like, hey, y'all don't do that. Don't talk about that. Shh. Well, that. no, no, nah. that's not no, it's not just that because what it does is it make corporations also question the work ethic of the people who they are paying a particular salary. If you come to them and you're like, hey, I do a, B through Z, and I make this much, and Nick does A through C and makes this much more than me, I won't leave if y'all don't pay me more than him. So then they got to now look at what they paying him for the work he do. That could jeopardize his money. And, and again, they got to look you at making you me out money. to be the bad guy when it's the corporation is the one that's saying you can't make that money. Or it's it's, I mean, it's it's it's, it's not it's just a, the corporations. It's a great Jedi mind trick it's by not, the it's, it's not it's not just it's the wonderful. corporations. Hold on, it's not just the corporations that do that. Employees do that shit too. People lie about their credentials and oversell themselves into positions to get paid to get more pay, and they're full of shit. It's a straight. It's a game from both sides. It ain't just Don't the corporations. Don't let your keep you down. Ask these questions. Figure out what people making. Mm-hmm. Y'all, y'all, y'all walk around your job yeah. asking people what they make. <laughs> Stop being scared. Like, mm-hmm. All right. Hey, man. Where did we wow. leave off at? <laughs> Where did we leave off Y'all at? went on a full-fledged tangent. The last thing was um, was Molly. Of course. <laughs> and so, yeah, she going to get this work from this white woman. We'll see how that goes. If that works in her favor, if that opens up any new doors or opportunities for her in Chicago, which would be interesting because then she would have to leave or the show or move. I guess she said it'll be dual, I guess. I, I don't know because she said L.A. and Chicago. Yeah, so I don't I don't know. Yeah, yeah I guess if, if the lady asked her to join full time in Chicago, then, yeah, maybe it'll be something along those lines where it'd be. Mm. You know, show but hmm. so they had think. another uh they had another scene with Nini this episode but I I wasn't really paying attention to what the hell Nini was doing I don't know if she was thinking about running north or if something else was going on but there was a Nini Nini was trying to get with the master okay the master okay she's rubbing she's rubbing that hand all right. And the little boy saw it because that little boy be seeing everything hey, little boy, he did see outside. everything that's what she said hey little boy be seeing everything <laughs> Yeah, we'll never go outside. He's saying everything. <laughs> so um, he said he said what? Didn't she? Now, in 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 this episode, was this the one where Tiffany, which is Amanda Seals character, talked about that her and her husband went and through it, a yep. situation? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Like like like, like like that nigga moved out. That boy by. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to put this that boy by because the way that she kind of just squirmed while talking about the situation. Yeah, she kind of was just like, oh no, I don't want to talk about it. And then she tried to segue to something else. Mm-hmm. And you're like, uh, bitch, I mean, you can't just always, not say nothing about this. When you when you come up there and you try that hard to to portray yourself as somewhere, you hiding something. You always hide yeah. something. And her I like that her last name is uh Dubois. Tip on the show, Tiffany Dubois. That's a perfect name. It is. For her. She's matter of fact, Kelly and them don't have last names, just Tiffany. <laughs> even even uh the co-workers, Lawrence don't have no last name, Frida don't have no last name, Kelly don't have no last name, but Tiffany, Tiffany Dubois got a last name. So um let's get let's get to Issa. I think we got everything with Issa and her relationship stuff. Yeah, that's, I mean, you know, at the end, she... Ask dude if you want to fuck. 
Yeah, she went. And it looked like dude that played Johnny Gill in the New Edition story was was playing. I think his name was Glenn. Mm-hmm. It looked like that's what she was asking if he wanted to fuck, but we won't know till next episode. Um. So now she had the point, I guess, of you know, fuck feelings. Yeah. So let's get into her job. And let's start with some something we missed last episode, missed discussing last episode. Her coworkers are racist as fuck. Three hundred levels, and are oh, but yeah, are multicultural, are. racist people. Holy mm-hmm. fuck! Absolutely. Like the the, the and they like this since day one. The two when yeah. one when two of those teachers came out the room and said. We can't do anything with the class because the teacher only speaks Spanish. We asked her to go home and learn English and she didn't when she came back. I was like, what? Yeah, that's uh, that's what they've been that since the first season. And that's what they're there for to show that dichotomy of like. People who go out there trying, they want to help people mm-hmm. and they want to. They're not doing it for the right reasons. <laughs> They're doing it because they feel like, oh, I, I have something to share because I'm affluent and I come from this thing and I know the right. things that you're supposed to know. Right. So all while shit on people the whole time. And right. you also had like the, yeah. the juxtaposition of the schools that some of them get to work at, which are more privileged, whiter schools, and they're very excited about the programs going on. Like, we're teaching these kids how to take the SATs or whatever. And they were like, they're a little bit young for that, which lets me believe they're in a middle school or an elementary school. No, they're not. High school. She said, the, the, no, no, no. The, the, the ones that were excited to go work with kids because they were at the good school. Yeah. Cause they usually do their stuff in middle schools. Mm-hmm. And she and Issa wanted to take it to a high school, level. A, middle, a high school. That's what Joanne was trying to tell her. So she even said, this is, she said, this is why we stay out of high schools because it's hard to get engagement. Mm-hmm. They just don't want to. Middle school kids want to jump right in. High school kids don't. So but middle school kids are crazy though. They are. No, well, they're going through puberty. Hormones. Middle yeah. school. Middle school kids are crazy. So that's to fix this situation, um, Issa, Asa, and uh, Frida decide to go talk to Vice Principal Gaines. Did you see his desk? Did you hear his mouth? <laughs> Vice Principal Gaines is probably one of the most tragic lost nigga characters I have ever seen on a television show. He is definitely a Republican. He definitely voted Green Party though, probably. Uh I'm pretty sure he was a Bernie bro. And he probably was very excited to see them repeal Obamacare. Because all those Mexicans is getting free health care from that. <laughs> Bruh. The first thing this nigga did. Because I got a list. Hold on. The first thing this nigga said after getting a call. That somebody stepped in vomit. Mm-hmm. Which he responded to. Just throw some salt on it. (laughs) He then made a joke about how the school was overcrowded. And they should build up. They might have to build a wall and get them to pay for it. Yes. Which then was followed up. By another call. Where the guy said. We found. Huh? Huh? I said he's saying these things very calmly too. Oh, he was laughing. Then he made one, he made a statement where he got another walkie talkie call and the guy said, Oh, uh, we found mold. And he said, Well, can't you just scrape it off? So yes, um Issa and them come back to school the next day after he promises them that they will have better attendance to their program after school. Well, he didn't lie. Not only did they have full attendance, they also had an assistant to help them with the full attendance when they showed up to the point where Issa even asked her uh, when the assistant asked them what would they need to start running the program? 
Issa said, y'all got pencils and paper. Do y'all have pencils and paper? And the woman said, yes, we're, we're school. school. That was a that was a different teacher. And if you had a school, you can always tell when you get an experienced teacher because they can just get shit done. Yeah. That, that other people just can't get done. Mm-hmm. And there's like, they, she, he was like, oh, who? Because like, the, the good question he asked was, oh, who, who's the teacher we got signed to you? And she told him, he was like, okay, all right, all right, all right don't worry. I'm going to put, you know, he in his head, like, I'm going to put Miss So-and-So on it. And Miss So-and-so was, like, there with 20 kids, like, ready. Like, y'all ready? Let's go. Also, shout out to Lawrence for not listening to Chad when Chad got mad at him for telling Tasha the truth, where Chad said, you should, I think he said, you should have sat, squatted, and had an egg on that shit. Egg on that shit. Yes. <laughs> nigga what oh i love that nigga man i love that nigga for real um he's what you see i love that you you hear that brian mcknight two bedrooms to sleep in what for you what for your feelings it's just a classic line um so when they came back the next day Issa was talking to frida and frida was like i was so disturbed by what Gaines said yesterday that i watched the 13th to uh what'd she say to she she trying no no she's, <laughs> oh she said she she said i stress watched the 13th then, then she like tweeted ava i contacted ava on the on twitter <laughs> she liked my tweet and Issa was like oh okay and then she followed that up with duvernay exclamation <laughs> so um but whole girl had it like she was totally right in being like, "Yo, this dude is saying some crazy ass shit. <laughs> we can't just act like he not saying some crazy right, ass shit." Right, because he is. A, they're supposed to be running a program where they're helping these kids, and the person mm-hmm. that's helping them yeah. get the program together is actually racist and prejudiced as fuck <laughs> to the to one half of the population, maybe more of the school, and he's saying shit like. You saved that Spanish stuff for the bus. Yeah. And he made another wall joke to Issa outside. Yeah. I, you know, I was happy when this school was all black. But then those browns and tacos started moving in. I believe is what he said. Something to that nature. He said like something, like something with the color taco meat. Like it was... <sighs> And the way and uh, the way when she was talking to Issa about it, and I understood where Issa was coming from, like, hey, we just got it started. But the way she just totally dismissed her, like she didn't have a valid claim to be thinking like this is wrong. But that's like, you can be like, all right, I agree with you, but we need to find out a way to do it because we don't want to mess up. And then the we we messed the program up and we got a lot of kids who don't get it but but that's, she kind of wrote all like girl that's just how he is like listen we we he, we not gonna change him so we need to just ignore it is basically what she said to her yeah. but Issa and even in that moment like I I didn't I never I didn't understand where Issa was coming from at all and I think that was because I completely correlated that to the fact that she almost she was about to lose her program based upon what Joanne was telling her when she said, you know, to quote a very famous person, you got to put your back into it. <laughs> oh, no, no, my like bad. I, you can I, do I, it. Put your back into it. To which Issa She's did like, say, yes, I, Ice Cube. <laughs> and then, yeah. Like, like, yeah. And that's, she didn't want to, she didn't want to put the program in danger. She didn't want to go and confront the principal and the principal would be like, oh, y'all can't be here. Right. And then she loses that. So, but like to, I felt like she could have been like, hey, I hear what you're saying, girl. It ain't right, but we got to figure out a way to do it so we don't lose this program for the kids. That would have been better instead of her just being like, girl, that's just how he is. We ain't worried about it. it. Just, it's weird because <laughs> Frida was like, Frida was like, Frida, as the white person said, would it be okay if a white person was saying the same thing? And Issa really which did. Which, like was, said, which is a great question. Off. Right. Like you got a woke white person with you. She just finished watching the thirteenth dog. She gets it. Yeah, and she's the one. She's the one girl like there that's always been trying. 
like she stumbled and acknowledged she stumbles, but she's she's open to criticism and she's trying. So I think when she came to her, she was like, "Yeah, I, I know if, if nobody like she's like I know nobody else would get this, but I know Issa, I know Issa would feel me when I'm saying like this this some crazy shit he's saying." And then when that didn't happen, she was like, "Well, damn." Yeah, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how they deal with this next episode. I'm I'm curious, but uh, like I said, the last thing she said was what trying to fuck. So it's going to probably be more of her mishaps through the apple, you know. Well, it's it's going to be might, funny because the next episode will be her dating while Lawrence is trying to build a relationship with a new girl yeah. and attends her ghetto cookout. Yeah, we might finally get to see the scene you know, when she asked the, when she asked Molly to teach me how to hoe. No, we are. That's what we're going to get to see. Yeah. For sure. Before they go to the club and Issa does her, her walk, her struggle walk. Oh, she says, I'm just trying to walk slow to be sexy. She looks slow walking. <laughs> so, mission accomplished. All right, y'all. Where's my 40 Acres podcast? We are finished recapping this episode two of Insecure. Y'all know where to find us. Where's my 40 Acres.com. Uh, if you want to drop and leave us a voicemail for these reviews, you know where to drop it. 443-323-494. And you can hit us up via voicemail podcast at where's my 40 acres.com. Until then, we will holler at y'all with episode three of Insecure in a week. Be safe and peace. <laughs>